So it's a pleasure to introduce uh, my dear colleague, uh, John Christen. Uh, he's coming from the UK. And I can say that he's a very known uh, life coach, uh, actor, musician. And we had a beautiful experience in Maribor. So, and we are very grateful to have uh, him there because uh, he had beautiful lectures and workshops for our students. Uh, they are future music educators and uh, I'm really, really happy that you can uh, share, that we can share uh, John's experiences and knowledge and everything because it is very, very important for you as future musicians, uh, perhaps teachers and perhaps who knows what. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's knowledge not so important than some life skills you have to have. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, what could you do when you are a perfect professionalist and unhappy person? So, let's do the well, best. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I assume you're all okay with the English. Yes. yes. I apologise for not speaking your language in advance. Uh, if, uh, as we go along, if you have a problem with anything I say, please feel free just to put your hand up and stop me. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, put your hand up. If I'm midstream, then I'll kind of go hang on a minute. But otherwise, I would really like you to feel comfortable and relaxed to interact with me, okay? One of my signs here, which some of you can't see, and here at the back, is your brain is like a sleeping giant. <laughs> now, most of us are not aware of quite how asleep the brain is and how much capacity and capability we still have sitting, lying, dormant. And it's a time when things are changing fundamentally in what we're beginning to understand about the human instrument. And that's the important approach I'd like to take with you tonight. Is what I've learned through my hard lessons uh, that have now made my life much more easy because I've been through the lessons of life. So I hope I'll be able to share with you some of my experience that will make your journey quicker in learning how to make life like a musical piece as you go through it, as opposed to a discordant piece. So, uh, learning is great when we're having fun. So I'd like to start by having a little bit of fun with you. This is a little exercise to show you that there's much more going on than our physical senses perceive. But I need a volunteer. Don't all run at once, does it? Okay, I <laughs> yeah. Okay, good man. What's your name, please? <laughs> I'm so nervous already. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What's your, wait, hand here, mate. What's your name, please? Clement. Clement, nice to meet you. Please take a seat, sir. Okay, I want you to tell Clement everything you don't like about him. No, it's a joke. Go on. <laughs> right. Okay, it's a bit of fun. Okay, 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 okay ready? He's getting lighter. <laughs> senses to be aware of. Animals do it, other creatures do it, but we've lost it. Okay. <laughs> so that demonstrates for you. <laughs> Good man, yeah, give me yeah. five. <laughs> so I'm going to take you through some slides here that will help to explain that journey to you and uh, help you hopefully understand things that took me a long time to understand. Okay. How often would you have done something differently in your life if you trusted your intuition? Yeah. 
So maybe in this context here we could refer to our intuition as the intelligent conductor guiding us through our lives and trying to let us know when our thinking and our emotions and our behaviour and habits are not in harmony with the conductor. Not listening, not following, not paying attention. What's intuition? What is it to you? The voice of the soul. The wisdom of the soul, very nice. The voice of the soul. Very nice. <coughs> what else would you say? I agree. <laughs> I agree, that's very good. This is the Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary's uh, definition. Do you want to read it out for me? Read it out loud for me. The ability to uh -huh. So think about that. <laughs> and try and reason it. But it's something beyond thinking. It's not just the thought process, but the thinking mind has to be available to it. At the moment, we've created societies based on thinking life, not trusting feeling and living life. Would you agree? So, it's time for us to make a shift, because, because of that, we can see all around us, we're paying quite a heavy price, and the price is becoming heavier. Because we're not listening. So, here's somebody that listened. Read this with me. The intuitive mind is a sacred gift, and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> okay. Right. It's guided the lives of some of the greatest thinkers, artists, and business owners on this planet. And in my experience, this is what it's doing for my life. When I was your age, I was probably wondering the kind of things you were wondering. What am I going to do? Where am I going to go? How will I survive? And uh, uh, without anybody to help me and guide me into trusting my intuition, I frightened the life out of myself. I spent weeks, months, years worrying, stressing. And not even realizing that because I was creating that disharmony within myself, it was actually affecting all of my relationships. So it made it harder for me to get work and jobs. Because I was not in a good place with myself. But I learned from those lessons. So uh, we have to train the monkey mind. And, uh, and of course, when the mind is trained, that it's like a candle flame. It becomes steady. So the energy in the body becomes steady not flickering all over the place. That's why in some meditation schools, that's a meditation, is to meditate on a candle flame. Then close your eyes and hold it here. Hold that steadfast flame. It trains the mind. Stop flickering around. But when you're focused, it's so easy. If you have some time in school, for example, 10 days or a month, if you're focused on that, then it's a lot easier. But when you are during all the other... I agree. It's, it's, it's yeah, a I'm bit difficult. How we manage it. But you see, I mean, what we've got to seriously look at now is why are things like that? Because that's what we keep doing. Yeah. And now we're buying into it, and we're all doing it, and we're calling it life. And we're paying for it with cancers, and financial breakdowns, and, uh, destroyment of nature, and everything else. So, you know, the only people that are going to stop it are us, especially you, the next generation, passing that to the next generation, you know. Um, and that takes courage. 
You have to stop going to school. <laughs> well, <laughs> and do meditation. <laughs> you, know, you see, um, you know, here's the truth. Education helps to train the mind. But if you train the mind to serve the higher intelligence, that's the great use of the mind. And we used to, in our culture, centuries ago, only use thinking to ask a question. That was all. Then you stop, listen, and you follow. But now we do it reverse. Think, think, think. Cram the brain with information, information, information. We have schools. How do we transform these models so they serve us with real life skills? And, and make us intelligent enough to go in the environment that we've created. And we've got to do that, and we've got to do it well. But if we've got real knowledge, we use the second hand knowledge <laughs> in order to be uh, the change. Okay? But if you understand how your own brain now works because of um, the way you've learned to think, if you really understand how that functions in you, and then you use it wisely, then you'll know how to think well and teach others how to do that too. All right, we have to stop. I know. Yes, guys, thank you very much. We could go on for ages. Uh, email john.christian07 at gmail.com.